Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Kung, Gasha, Christopher, I know only three of us are here right now. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Yes, please go ahead. God, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you so much for your loving kindness and for being faithful all to our lives, God. Lord, as we're about to learn uh, discipling in groups, God, I thank you, Lord, that you help us to understand what it is to be in union together and to grow in your word and in your truth, God. Thank you so much, Lord, for Pastor Paul as he's about to teach, God, that you pour out your spirit, God, and I pray that Lord, that we will not depart from the word that has been taught, God, but instead we will hide them in our heart and meditate day and night. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Thank you, Asha. No. Just one moment, please. All right. So last week we talked about few aspects on developing functioning skills <clears throat> as leaders uh, we talked uh, uh, last week we did only one hour we talked about keep learning continuously uh, and uh, uh, you know some specific skills that you and I will need to be as good leaders developing people and relational relationship skills now we talked about how uh, ministry is about people uh, Everything we do is about people. It's not about only the events and even the events and the programs that we have is for the people. So uh, as leaders, we must develop the ability to become a people person, right? If we are already, you know, very people friendly, people person, we have that in us. That's wonderful. If we are extroverts, we are confident about the way we speak and all of that. That's wonderful, right? Uh, but if we are not, then we have to develop that skill and building relationships. Now, it's not only about talking, you know, being confident and speaking and confident in the word, confident in, uh, you know, ministering the word and all of that, but it's also building relationships within the team. Now, how do we build relationships? It's, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time proactively meeting, proactively, you know, uh, uh, just getting rid of fear of meeting people, uh, being kind, being courteous, knowing the other person, just praying for the other person, knowing what they're going through. Uh, these are simple yet important skills that we need to develop as leaders. Right now, this is in a broader sense. It's not only for cell groups. Right. It's also for whatever ministry that we may be called to do. Right. We may be in a volunteering team. We may be a team leader leading a team in the corporate sector. Wherever it is, we are called to be people who can build healthy relationships. Right. And as a leader, we must understand that, you know, people are insecure. People need help. People are looking for comfort. They're looking for guidance. They're looking for hope. They're looking to, you know, just be emotionally strong, spiritually strong. Uh, they desire relationships. They desire to be successful. Uh, have this wonderful opportunity to speak into people's lives, right? So uh, let's go to the next topic. We we'll just briefly talk about uh, developing counseling skills, right? Developing counseling skills. Just, just one moment, please. Right, developing counseling skills. Right, let me just uh, present the notes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Asha. I, I just realized that 
I didn't do that. So uh, I've just post, I've just put it up. Right. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, so developing counseling skills. Now, as leaders, we will get opportunities to counsel one another, right? Now, the Bible is very clear about counsel. The word counsel is used many times, especially in the Old Testament, because it was during that time when there were a lot of prophets. The Lord had uh, you know, sent messages to the prophets, to the nation of Israel, whether it's northern, uh, whether the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom. So, uh, so there was a lot of this prophetic counseling. There was a mix of the prophetic and there was a mix of the counsel of the Lord, right? meaning a word of wisdom. Right? Now, let's look at this. How do you and I develop the ability to counsel? Right? Now, this is an area where you know, many times we may feel, hey, um, you know, I'm, not call, I'm not called to be a counselor. Or two, I'm not you know, skilled enough or I haven't uh, done the right courses uh, to counsel people. Now, that may be true, right? but each one of us, uh, as leaders, we must understand that people uh, are going through seasons, people are going through difficulties and challenges, and all of that is there. So they will come up to you as leaders because they will look at us as leaders, and they will come and ask uh, for godly counsel. Right Now, one of the things that we can do is, even if we don't have the basic counseling skills, it is something that we can learn and develop in ourselves, right? Now let's look at this point. Look at a few points here, right? First one, develop the art of listening. Just listen without jumping into conclusions. Uh, now this is so true. Say for example, somebody says, you know, a young man or a young girl, a youth comes and tells you, as a leader, you know what? I'm feeling suicidal. Uh, this feeling, you know. Nothing's going right in my life. I'm, I feel depressed. I feel that my life is not going anywhere. Everything's just the same. So I'm having suicidal tendencies. Now, it is very easy for a leader, right, especially you know somebody who's you know always talking and mentoring people. It's very easy for us to say, "Hey, God says that I have come to give you life and life in abundance. God says that you know you can uh, you know." overcome every challenge in life. Yes, that's true, right? But we must get uh, learn and develop the art of listening. So what can we do? Ask pointed questions right? and listen to them. Right? So one of the things we can personally do is say, hey, oh, I'm sorry to hear this, uh, uh, but uh, you know, why do you feel this way? Then they'll, they'll keep sharing and sharing and sharing. Never jump to conclusions saying, hey, um, you know, this is just a devil. You have to overcome him. You have to overcome the temptations and you'll be able to, you know, uh, live victoriously. No, no. Develop the art of listening. Right, pointed questions, the right questions at the right time. Now, again, this comes over time. We will learn to ask the right questions, right? Uh, uh, especially if it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion, uh, and people are asking you questions, and they, they, you know, they're just pouring out everything in their heart to you. Uh, it's very important to ask the right questions, right? Uh, because that will open up uh, new ways of ministering them, or it'll open up to things that may not have they may not have opened up to anybody, right? Asking the right questions. 
Three, build confidence and hope in the person. Now, the person has shared, poured out everything that's going on in their lives, probably about their work, family, children, personal life, mental problems, physical problems, emotional problems, whatever the problem is. Now, for you and I as leaders, it may be overwhelming. But we may feel, oh, just, you know, it's been 45 minutes. I'm just listening to this person you know, just pour out and talk and talk and talk. Uh, but the responsibility of a leader is to build confidence and hope in the person. Never must a person get out of a, con of a counseling room feeling the same. There should be some kind of confidence or some kind of hope built in that person. Right. You can do that through your words of affirmation. You can do that through uh, you know, just giving them words from the scripture uh, or praying for them, just uh, uh, you know, using your own life as a testimony and how God has helped you overcome. Uh, so these kind of uh, aspects can be shared. And this will help build confidence and hope in, in the person. Right, uh, so that's our main intention, right? It's not like we okay finished one hour of session of counseling. No, we build confidence, we build hope in the person uh, that his spirit, his you know, he's encouraged. Uh, he or she's encouraged once they uh, leave that counseling room. Now, uh, it's not like you know, fully encouraged. Everything is all right. No, they will still feel those hurts and the challenges once they come out of that counseling room. But somewhere, there's some kind of confidence that you have built in them. Right? Uh, so that must be our main intention. It's, it's, uh, is to bring hope, bring confidence, bring encouragement into the other person. Then give room and time for the person to open up. Now, uh, especially if you look at it in a cell group format, Right. Uh, there will be people who will come join your cell group, but over time, uh, you know, they may not uh, open up. Right. Initially, they may not open up, but over time, they will open up. Right. Uh, why? Because they've started talking, started building relationships, and so give room and give time for people to open up. Especially if it's a new role, if it's something new that is being done. Uh, give some time, right? uh, you know, even if you're you know, planting a church, for example, uh, and you have some folks join the church, don't expect them to, you know, immediately open up to you because they're still getting to know you. They're still getting to know the ministry and what the church or the ministry stands for, what's the vision and all of those things, right? So always give time for a person to open up. Right. And on the flip side, never force a person, never force a person to, you know, why don't you tell me? You tell me what it is and I will help you. Uh, you know, I, I can give you some good guidance. Never force them. Right. Uh, because if you force them, they may out of, you know, uh, they may just share it. Okay. Because he's, you know, he's a pastor and he's, for, he's telling me to share what the problem is. So I'm just going to share it with them. But, they're doing it out of an obligation. When they do it on their own, uh, you know, they, they really know that they're opening up to you and it gives you an opportunity to speak into their lives. Right? Always give time. Right? Uh, now, for example, you know, uh, I was in Mangalore uh, for four years, right? And uh, uh, as a family, we went there to look after the church in ABC Mangalore. Uh, when we went there, we were just few people, right? Maybe about... 10 of us, right? 10, 10 people in the church. And they were mostly uh, people who were, uh, you know, retired uh, and people who are, you know, uh, there were a couple of youths, maybe two or three youth, uh, but most of them were uh, retired elderly couples, right? Now, I've gone there. They just know me, okay, as a person. But they don't know, right? Uh, they haven't built a relationship yet with me. So I cannot expect them to come and share with me. I cannot tell, hey, I've got 
uh, prior experience. So you come and you share with you know. Uh, you have to give them time. So over time, it took about four, five months, six months. We got to know each other. We had all these prayer meetings together, uh, you know, worship evenings, events together. We we would meet for Bible studies and working together, you know, just working together as a team. We were just 10. Uh, so we began to understand each other. They began to understand me, uh, where I'm coming from. I began to understand their challenges. And, uh, you know, the best part is when we as leaders, uh, you know, we don't have to cover up our challenges. We must be, we must be open about it. Let me say, we also go through challenges. We are also regular people. Uh, it's not like just because we are pastors and leaders, we don't have challenges. Uh, uh, in fact, it should be all the more. You know, we may have even more challenges than the others. Uh, but what happened was over time, I think it was about four to five months. Uh, you know, uh, I remember after church, I would say, if you want prayer, please come uh, after service. And nobody would come initially, right? Uh, but I knew, right? Uh, because I haven't really, we haven't still built a relationship. But that didn't stop me from being available. Right? So over time, I would always, every Sunday say, you know, we are available. If you want prayer, just after service, we are here. Then over time, I noticed that people started coming. They started sharing. Uh, or what all is happening in their lives or over their families or workplace. And then we began to, you know, just uh, counsel them in small ways, just be there to support them, to strengthen them. And after a year, it became a norm. Right? So they would just come share. So don't be in a hurry for people to, you know, to make people share what's happening in their lives, nor should we be in a hurry to, you know, uh, force them to share what's going on in their lives. Give them time. Next one, speak the word of God. Very important. Isaiah 54 and 5. Uh, the Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God had opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away, turned away back. Right? Now, look at this. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. The word of God, right? Uh, yes, counseling is wonderful. You know, we have a lot of counseling that happens outside of the church, outside of the word of God, which will help which is definitely helpful, right? We have all these psychologists and uh, all these new courses that come up, which have uh, counseling and all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, training that is uh, given to people in terms of counseling. But remember that the, there's this power in the word of God, right? So whenever as, as, as leaders and maybe even when we get the opportunity to counsel, Always try your best to get in the Word of God. I won't say try your best, but get in the Word of God. Right? So, for example, a person says, you know, this is what I'm going through. These are the problems I'm facing. Uh, it could be a general problem. Right? Uh, just a fear of uh, losing your job, for example. Uh, uh, so you give them counsel and then you give them the Word. Okay, but I also want to say, this is what the Word of God says. So maybe you can go home and read it. Uh, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. So you can claim this over yourself. Now, what are you doing? You're speaking the Word of God. You're putting the seed of God's Word into their heart. right? And this is good ground. Because they're open, they're vulnerable, to just open to anything that we speak. Right? They're willing to listen. Uh, so you're putting seed in good ground. And remember, the seed that is sown will bear fruit in its time, in its season. Right? Uh, so speak the word over situations. So uh, that way, we must be prepared as leaders. Right? So somebody else will say, hey, I have, I'm always uh, you know, uh, uh, fantasizing, or I have these sexual thoughts in my mind. 
and uh, I'm, I'm talking I'm, I'm always thinking of you know pornography for example what would we say right we give them the practical solutions practical uh, counsel that is required but get in the word of god get in the word of god you can say hey here's what the bible says you know we are to renew our mind so yes the enemy is there but we can change our mind we can renew our mind we don't have to be conformed to this world so why don't you go ahead and uh, go home read about it think about it pray on these words on this words right now you're not expecting it to happen like magic if it does the word of god is able to do it give them the rhema word immediately and they just know it's the power of god uh, but over time sometimes it's just a seed which needs to be watered which needs to be looked after and only then it becomes a, a, a fruitful tree right so so give them time and speak the word of god right now especially if you know that there are certain people in your team or in your life group cell groups uh, you know that they're going through this problem right uh, always be prepared right? so there's some homework that we have to do right? so we'll have to go back okay now uh, if you know this person has depression problems so let me check verses that can bring encouragement be prepared with them right so that's a little bit of homework that we must do right uh, next one depend on the holy spirit right uh, isaiah 11 2 and 4 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, and shall make him a quick understanding, make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and it reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Right? Very important. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Intellectually, we may know what to say. Spiritually, the word, or we may know what to say. But depend on the Spirit of the Lord to give us wisdom and understanding and also depend on the Spirit of the Lord to speak to the other person. Right? The most we can do is talk to them. Right? We can't shake them and say, hey, you, this is what you must do. This is what the Holy Spirit can do. You must receive Him. We can't do that. Right? Uh, all we can do is God you we are we are giving the counsel we are just depending on your word depending on your spirit as we even as we give godly counsel god let your holy spirit minister to them depending on the holy spirit uh right uh, that is something very very important the word and the holy spirit even as we counsel people right otherwise what happens is it becomes the general counseling session a general counseling session, they can go anywhere. What is the difference? The difference is we are giving something that is eternal. That is the word and the spirit. It, uh, and and you, we, we must completely uh, depend on them. Right? Uh, I love Zechariah 4, 6. I always say to myself, well, because it says, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. Right? Uh, sometimes we have the capabilities, we have the abilities, the talent, the, the skills to do uh, a good counseling session. But we must depend on, on the Holy Spirit. We use all of that. We surrender it to God and say, God, anoint this, that it will be a blessing to me and a blessing to the other person who's listening. Right. Next one, be practical. Uh, counseling involves being practical as well, right? If you think practically, right? Now, if a person, if a young man comes, and you know, I remember this, uh, uh, an elderly family is worried about their son, 
who's who's a teen who's a teen right now uh, and was worried about his whole usage of uh, uh, social media he's always on instagram always on facebook always on the phone always on the laptop so they were a little worried right now 10 years back it was not a, this was not a problem at all or maybe 20 15 years back or you know not a problem at all there was no phones or even if it was their computers everyone were doing other things there were different problems at that time but now this is a problem so we need to give practical solutions to them we cannot tell them hey take that phone and never give it back to him it's not a practical solution he's a teen he needs a phone and now in this generation we need a phone we need to connect with people we need it for all our activities we need it it's, it's a practical important need but how can we give a good advice to, to you know uh, parents who are going through this problem and now this problem starts off with children with the, at a young age right even in their third standard fourth standard children uh, they just know how to use the phone and you know they know how to download they know how to play games everything is available on the phone how do we give practical solutions right so one way to do it is you can say hey uh, you can advise parents tell them hey, you set uh, timings right uh, this are these are the certain timings that you can use the phone and also let them know that uh, uh, your social media accounts uh, make sure that you know whatever you watch is clean it does not defile you uh, uh, and and just being practical about it talking about uh, you know one of the things we tell our parents uh, is, is to talk to your children about the uh, the pros and cons of uh, media digital media talk to them let them know about it uh, talk, get them to you know uh, also look at other options outside maybe outdoor games and outdoor things that they can do but these are practical right it's not talking about you know uh, this is what the lord will do and thus says the lord no just practical uh, things uh, and there may be plenty of practical uh, problems that are around so we need to give those practical answers but also again depend on the word and depend on the holy spirit direct the individual to get professional help uh, when the situation is beyond ours to handle right now as leaders even as pastors even as life group leaders cell group leaders or maybe you're mentoring somebody you're discipling somebody in the church uh, when you feel that an individual is, is, is you know whatever you've been sharing and talking and uh, counseling hasn't done much uh, you feel that the situation has gone beyond what you're able to handle, you and I can very freely just get them to have, you know, to get professional help, right? Now, this professional help, again, can be, you know, something that we have at APC is uh, Crystallist Counseling, which is, a, which is professional counselors who have studied and they have, they know, they've learned, they've studied about counseling, about psychology and all of that. Uh, professional counselors with giving practical guidance and also uh, bringing in the, the word and the spirit. So Christian professional counseling. Right? Uh, so you can direct them to that. Right now, what happens? What if I don't find uh, a christian professional counselor but there's only a professional counselor around you go ahead you can start with that right but then you you can be there to mentor and to speak god's word and uh, you know but there needs to be that continual follow-up right uh, but get professional help when required especially at times when you know this is when uh you know people have gone into the next level of, in terms of suicide you know they they've tried multiple times they have tried committing suicide but i failed uh, and you see that even after our sessions they are uh, there's no real change but they're still you know trying this uh, they're still you know, attempting uh, suicide or or you know they're just attempting to end their lives then you know that it's a serious situation 
right? And to get help for them. And what about, you know, maybe a couple or husband and wife, uh, they may come and say, you know, we're having these problems at home uh, and you have been, you know, you and I have been uh, helping them, counseling them, but you see that over time, things are just getting worse and they've come to a place where uh, they were okay to even get a divorce. You know that they need to get trained and experienced uh, professional counseling to help save their marriage. Right? But as leaders, we are always there to be there and to uh, empower them, to build them up, to encourage them. Again, uh, correction is important. Uh, it's not It's not that, okay, somebody's coming for counseling and then we, we only listen, we only listen and only give them uh, counsel but we can also bring correction right uh, but do it in love uh, and when and when we do it in love it's 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 good because the other person will take it in the right way right guard your time the husband and wife situations right uh, teen and young adult situations don't cross your boundaries right uh, that's again very important don't cross your boundaries uh, there are boundaries, and in, especially in counseling, we are in no place to dictate terms on what a family or a husband and wife should do. It is their decision, uh, what they do for their family. But all we can do is, uh, you know, give them godly counsel. Don't cross boundaries. We don't tell them what to do. Just tell them what can be done, right? Uh, we suggest, we give them advice, we give them counsel, but we don't dictate terms to them, right? Uh, and sadly, we see this happening, uh, especially in our nation, we see this happening in, you know, in rural areas, uh, but we thank God that things are changing even in villages and uh, rural areas where, uh, you know, Sometimes these pastors and leaders, they say, you know, if you don't do this, then it'll be a problem for your family. If you don't sell off this, or if we don't uh, send your son to this school, or you know, they have all these kinds of uh, ideas and thoughts. No. As leaders, we speak into their lives, we minister to them, but we let them make the decisions. We don't cross. We don't enter their family matters or their personal matters unless they share it to us. Again, when they share it to us, it is their decision. And you are never responsible for the pain of those who have ignored your counsel. Right? Now, this is uh, this is something that may happen, right? We may counsel, we may be counseling somebody or a couple or a, uh, or a youth or anyone, right? We're counseling someone and it's counseling and counseling them. But you see that they're not taking anything, you know, they've not applied everything, anything that you have thought or anything that you have uh, any ideas or plans you have shared with them. Uh, but over time, right? Uh, again, this comes to the point of uh guard your time right because you if you have done your part right and you see that the person uh is still you know there's no changes he's not he or she's not putting an effort to do what you know what has been told or we seeing there's no progress made uh you know you're not responsible for it never feel that you know hey i did so much but why did this person not take my uh, counsel. Uh, there will be people who may not take it. Right? In those situations, discard your time. They say, okay, uh, you know, you've done your part. You can just lovingly tell the person, hey, over three months I have spoken to you, but I don't see any progress. Maybe would you like to speak to another counselor? Would you want me to connect you to another pastor or another life group leader who can uh, counsel you? So never take responsibility. Never feel that, hey, uh, I was, maybe I didn't do my part. No. If you've done your part, uh, you don't have to go through the pain uh, uh, because they have ignored your counsel. It's all right. right? 
So these are some practical tips on um, counseling, right? Uh, any questions, any thoughts? Uh, any questions? How many of you have, uh, you know, uh, probably, you know, counseled some of them and, uh, you know, maybe you've gone through a, you know, a difficult time to handle them, or maybe, you know, they have uh, taken your suggestion and their counsel and it has helped them in their life. Uh, any of you? I think we'll try to counsel somebody. Yes, Upa, go ahead. Sir, good morning. Good morning. When I come across people who are really in need, but sometimes they are not ready to accept your counsel, I wait for the right time and they are willing to take the counsel. And I keep praying that God will he create a heart where he can, they can accept his counsel when it comes through me. And then when I share, many times I have seen people taking it seriously and applying it to their lives and really delivered from those situations. I give glory to God for that because counseling is easy, but the other person accepting the counsel and putting it into practice and also to give the right counsel at the right time and not to force them or coerce them in any way. And that is a learning I have learned over the years. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thank you, Rupa. Yeah, very true. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking about this as well, right? So easy to say, right? You know, you do this, do this, do this. Uh, but, you know, we don't, we may not understand what they are going through. And for them to receive it, it may be a big deal. For us, it can be like hey, it's suicide or no problem. You know, it's, you just pray, say, cast that demon out, cast that spirit out in Jesus' name, and move on. Do you want to end your life? It may be very simple to us, but then I'm sure you learn more. In, uh, in, in, uh, counseling, uh, you know, uh, simple to us. Hey, See, I'm going into depression and suicide. You know, the last thing you must say is hey, just pray and cast that demon out, and everything will be fine. You know, just look at Jesus, he'll help you. you no, know. and yeah, you know, we need to understand you know, again. There comes the listening skill, there comes the, uh, the empathizing. Uh, you know, we, we must be able to do that, right? Because they are on a different level, right? They are going through the problem, right? And uh, you know. Uh, the challenge sometimes is as leaders for example we we have not gone through uh, depression example right and somebody comes and says hey, i'm going through depression since we haven't gone through it sometimes we may not understand it right uh, uh, and so it may not be able we may not be able to empathize with them now a good leader must be able to understand and empathize it's also like this, right? If you if you look at uh, you know uh, couples with small children, right? if you ask a youth, they don't they don't know what what are, what are the challenges in looking after probably not challenges, but the things that are involved in looking after a child, right? Or children, they don't know they don't they they are teens or youth. They have other problems, right? Uh, so so we must. You know, I like what the Apostle Paul says, for the Jews, you become a Jew. For the Gentiles, you become a Gentile. You be who you have to be for the others. Right. So uh, again, that's an ability that we can ask God to uh, you know, give us. Right. Anything anybody else would like to share uh, before we just continue? OK. All right, uh, let's do a little more from then take a break. Okay. Uh, send leaders values and disciplines. 
Now, again, we 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 look at it initially as well, cell leaders' values and disciplines that uh, a cell leader should have. But just a few things, it's a summary here. A cell leader must live a life free of habitual sin, right? There, right, there, now the word here is habitual sin. There will be times when we go through challenges, you know, anger is a sin, right? Uh, maybe even shouting at somebody, uh, or pride, or jealousy. These are things that are there, but uh, we must get away from it, turn away from it. Right. So as leaders, uh, turn away from habitual sin. If you feel that, you now sometimes we always think of habitual sin is you know these uh, you know, uh, drinking alcohol, or smoking, or or doing drugs, or you know pornography, or all these things. Oh, habitual sin can be even getting angry for no reason every time. That's a habitual sin. So, if if that is something that is there in us, we need to free ourselves from it. Right? Uh, live life free from habitual sin. Uh, have a fully developed life. What? Pray alone, pray with your spouse and family, and pray with your team, your cell members, or your if you're a pastor, uh, you know, with your cell leaders, right? So a fully developed prayer life, alone with your family, and then with your team and your cell leaders. Uh, the earned respect of cell members, we must earn their respect over time, and respect is earned, right? Uh, from lots of servanthood, lots of preparation, lots of you know just being available, uh, being there to counsel, praying, having a burden for them, blessing them, uh, you know, uh, and eventually respect is earned. Right? Uh, faithful involvement in the local church and leadership and training and mentoring. Um, and when you talk about, uh, I don't know how it is in other churches, but uh, uh, probably there are teams, disciple teams, mentoring teams, uh, and that's something that we also want to look ahead in ABC uh, because you know, because we are growing, our life groups are growing as well. So, uh, so involvement in the church could include even training, teaching, uh, mentoring, discipling people. Now, when you talk about discipling, it could be. Uh, two people over the course of a year. So, for example, one leader can get two people and say, hey, these are two people you can disciple for the rest of 2023. Uh, and again, it becomes a cycle. And then that those two will train another two. And it's just a cycle. So that whole discipleship uh, you know, uh, gets carried on and on and on. Right? A strong desire to share Christ's love with anyone who will listen uh, and a determination to help fellow cell members reach their friends in Christ, meaning evangelism, right? So with this, we complete step two uh, of the cell leaders training. Uh, we'll stop here. Uh, Kumblu has a question. Oh, OK. I hope, I hope my voice is all right. Uh, all right, so we'll stop here. Um, what we'll do is uh, for the next class, you can just study, take your time, uh, take your personal time to study, uh, uh, read, or use the time to just pray and seek God. Uh, and next class, we'll begin with step three. We're almost completing the portions, but next class, we'll have the two hours. We'll uh, try and complete it, and then we'll spend some time. Uh, just opening it up for questions. Uh, together we can ask questions and learn from each other. I, uh, so is that okay? I, uh, we'll close for today, and then we can meet uh, next Tuesday. Please hear. Just the next hour to study uh, and to uh, maybe you could read. I'd like to do. Thank you, sir. Be one of us can please pray. Rupa, would you like to pray? Sure, sir. 
We thank you, Lord, for this new day, new morning, and the class you, you have given us in Jesus' name, Lord, that we could refresh and learn so many things about being a cell leader. Father God, please grant each one of us the discipline we need and also the spirit counsel at each moment to carry on your work for your glory, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bless our pastor with your healing as is. And also, Father God, I pray that each one of us will be right in your presence, Father, filled with a fresh and new, Father God, with thy spirit and lead us and guide us to learn what you're teaching and put it into practice in the name of Jesus, so oh Lord God. Father, bind us together with more of your love, more of you in our lives, and guide us, Master, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great week. I'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much.